Handicapping is predicting the outcome of horse races, figuring out which horses have the greatest chance of winning, separating the contenders from the pretenders, and profiting from it. And you can reap even more rewards by looking for a winning selection at a value price. It's simple, it's complex, and some even call it an art. And when analyzing the past performance information in the program, you can consider a number of factors. Let's look at some. In my book, the most important task in handicapping is determining the current condition or present form of each horse. By looking at their most recent races, we can often get a good idea of how they performed and whether a horse is sharp. The positive signs are sudden bursts of early speed, showing a strong, competitive finish, or winning easily last out. Here's an example of showing sudden speed. Back on May 1st, Morgan Sweetheart showed sudden speed from an outside post, post position 7, and finished a solid second. In her next start on May 15th, she went wire to wire in a lifetime best of 152 and 3. The most recent race is almost always the best indicator, unless a horse had a legitimate excuse for a poor performance. Go to the replay center and watch the races again to get a better gauge on past performance and find hidden form. Next to form, class is high on the list of handicapping factors. Who has the horse raced against most recently? How did the horse handle that level of competition? Is the horse dropping, moving up, or staying in the same class? More emphasis should be placed on who a horse can beat, not always how fast a horse can go. Like other sports, statistics don't lie, and you need to also check out what drivers and trainers are winning and who are rising and sliding in the standings. Depending on the size of the track, post position can be a noteworthy influence, with the outside being the least favorable, while inside posts allow horses to get a better start and save ground. Winning percentage is an important number to consider. Horses are creatures of habit, and some have that winning instinct, while other horses seem content to just follow along. What makes handicapping so much fun and challenging is that everybody has their own methods and theories. Here are some of the best in the business. Bob Hayden, Sam McKee, and Dave Brower. All right, Ken, thanks very much. You know, there are a lot of things to take into consideration when you are handicapping a race, and it usually starts right here with the official program that you buy at the track. But some of the other things that I like to do when I'm handicapping a race is you start with the horse. After all, it's the horse that makes the race, and it's the horse that can win the race for you. How sharp is he? Is he moving up in class, down in class? Does he have early speed, or is he a come-from-behind type? You definitely want to take into account all of those things that deal with the horse. Second of all, you have to take a look at the driver. Is one of the top drivers of the track racing your horse tonight? Here at the Meadowlands, of course, we've got Dave Miller and Brian Sears. They're the top two. They win most of the races. So if you've got either of those two gentlemen driving your horse, obviously your chances go way, way up. Third, how about the trainer? Trainers are very, very streaky. They're liable to win several races in a week or they're liable to be in a losing streak. So check the recent stats on your trainer just to see whether they're hot or whether they're not. And finally, the last thing to take a look at, of course, are the odds. The morning line odds are there to assist you in the program, but that's not what happens once the real betting starts. Take a look at the television screen. Take a look at the tote board out in the infield. And take a look at the odds on the horse that you like in the race. Do you normally like favorites, or are you a long-shot specialist trying to hit that home run? However you decide to handicap, though, the one thing that is absolutely most important, make it fun. Good luck to everybody, and happy handicapping. You know, a very important part of handicapping is looking for excuse lines. Let's take a look at about a half dozen or so that are very important on the racing program. We'll start with off tracks. Sloppy, muddy, snowy. Not every horse reacts the same to an off track, especially the younger horses. How about interference? The eye in the program indicates interference, but was it two lengths? Was it five lengths, ten lengths? It's hard to tell. You can go to the replay center or even the retrieval center and take a look for yourself. The program is not going to tell you how many lengths it was. Lack of racing room, well, bad luck is a part of every sport, especially racing. Sometimes you just can't find racing room. Be patient and come back next week. Use too hard too soon, well, fast early fractions, a lot of early pressure, nothing you can do about that. Sometimes in racing, you have to get the trip to win. Again, come back next week and follow up. A stalled outer tier is one of the toughest things to overcome in harness racing. Real Desire did it back in the 2001 Meadowlands pace. He went around bad cover and ran down Better's Delight. It's tough to do that here. More or less, if you're an adult flow, the race is over. 
and caught behind the quitter. Same type of thing, but this is on the inside. If you caught behind a horse who stops racing, you can't even go around him when you caught inside. More or less, you gotta throw the race out and come back next week. These are hopefully some helpful hints to help you in your handicapping at the Meadowlands. My favorite handicapping angle is pace and position because nowadays in harness racing practically every horse can go fast, especially at the mid to upper level conditions here at the Meadowlands. So what I like to do are look at replays of races or charts of races and find a horse that is pace and position compromised and maybe put in an impossible spot to win early on in a race. Now here's a perfect example for you, American Ideal when he was a three year old at the Red Mile in Lexington in the Simpson Stakes. Let's take a look at the chart and we'll talk about how the race developed. American Ideal starts from post position 8. Everybody inside him floats out of there, so driver Mark McDonald takes back, and he's last in the early stages. The opening quarter goes in 28 and 4. Now one horse is parked out, so based on the rule of thumb that one length equals a fifth of a second, we can estimate he's about 10 lengths from the front at the opening quarter. That means he got to the quarter individually in a pedestrian 30 and 4. Now the pace starts to pick up. In the second quarter, he starts to move up with so-so cover, ends up finishing second behind a nondescript rival named Minor the Best who wins in 150 and 1, which means American Ideal paced in 150 and 3. Now a lot of people are saying, oh, the horse must be tailing off. He got beat by Minor the Best. The horse is done. He was raced too hard early in the year. Actually, it was a super effort. He paced his last three quarters in 119 and 4, which is sensational. He came back the very next week to set a then world record of 147 and 4. Now the other handicapping angle that I like to focus in on are horses that have to check during the body of a race because for a horse to have to stop and start during a race it's like your car on the freeway when you have to let off the gas and get back on it it takes your engine a minute to rev back up and to get back up to speed here's a perfect example from the other night watch mysterious moment and driver dave miller in the stretch mysterious moment is on the inside angles for room is blocked has to steady and check angles for another spot gets shut out of there checks severely and comes on with more pace at the end that horse had no chance the line doesn't really show it because he had to check repeatedly. Those are things to watch for when looking at the video replays. By sticking to a systematic approach, you can make a reasonably successful judgment about the outcome of horse races. But it takes a bit of work to pick a winner, search for value, and find your own successful way of handicapping. Develop your own style, per se. Learn more about the intricacies of the sport. For instance, next time, we'll talk about equipment. In the meantime, good luck.